Good evening, everybody. And once again, a very warm welcome to everyone joining us tonight for this really special event on Sleep Saboteurs. My name is Abby, and I'm the Events and Partnership Manager at Drop By Health. And I'm really excited to be bringing you this event tonight on Sleep Saboteurs. Now, before I introduce tonight's guest speaker, I would like to firstly acknowledge and pay respects to the past, present and future traditional custodians and elders of the nations on which we each stand today. For anyone here who is new today to Drop Bio Health, we've been around for a few years now, and our mission is to help people improve their health through lifestyle and blood biomarker data. We do this through our free events like tonight's with health experts and products such as our at home finger prick blood test wellbeing. Our amazing community of like minded individuals looking to improve their wellbeing is in the thousands today. So if you're interested in joining them or finding out a little bit more about what we do at Drop Bio, make sure you check out the links in our chat box. Tonight, we're really grateful to be joined once again by Olivia Arizolo. Olivia is Australia's number one sleep expert and the author of Bear, Lion or Wolf, How Understanding Your Sleep Type Could Change Your Life. And we'll be taking us through some of the reasons why your sleep may be suffering and most importantly, what you can do to fix it. So before I hand over, please feel free to use that chat box to introduce yourself and to join the conversation. And we will have a dedicated time at the end um, for tonight's speaker to answer your questions. So if any questions do come up for you, make sure you put them in the Q&A box, which is at the bottom of your screen, and Olivia will answer those um, for you. So welcome back to Drop By Your Health, Olivia. Wonderful to have you. Thank, you. Thank you, Abby. It is such a pleasure to be here. I love that we have, and that you have created such a beautiful community of people seeking to improve their health. And it is so, so beautiful that I can come and share my wisdom and knowledge on sleep because we all know how good we feel after a good night's sleep. So um, super excited to share this. This is all around sleep sabotage, as we mentioned, which is the things that you're doing wrong before sleep which is really helpful to know because then you can stop doing them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and sleep is such a fascinating topic. Um, I thought it's your story is really interesting, Olivia. I thought maybe just to start to give people a bit of background, you could share um, a little bit of your story and why you ended up focusing on this particular area of health. Yeah, sure. So um, I struggled with really bad mental health problems in my teens um, I was suicidal, including attempted suicide at the age of 14 and suffering really bad depression, anxiety and anorexia. And through that period, I was, I was really struggling a lot and I had to really, um, you know, work with my coaches and my therapists. Otherwise I was going to never get better. And I saw this trajectory for myself. It was either I was going to choose positive and I was going to choose to care about my health or I was going to allow it to, um, you know, to deteriorate further. And I was going to stay so unwell that, you know, I was in hospital. And it was after seeing other people, you know, in that revolving hospital, uh, you know, system, I thought I don't want that for myself. I have to get better. And... From that, I decided to actually use my support system around me rather than reject them. And um, I, I did get better, which was great. And I was able to, you know, start living again, returning to school, you know, continue with my life, which was beautiful. And just being able to go from that really dark period where everything was so, was such a blur and, you know, so painful and so chaotic and then to then to step into a place where I was, you know, I, I had good memories and I was feeling energetic and I was excited to be awake. You know, this is, this for me was so, so, so powerful that I wanted everyone to have that same shift. Um, yeah. so this is what, yeah, this is what, what led me to my wellness work. Um, and I knew that I needed to study alongside my own personal experience. So I studied psychology and sleep psychology and nutrition and fitness because I knew I just wanted to help people feel their best inside and out. I just didn't know what that was. 
Um, and then I started doing coaching for various areas and my sleep clients got really good results. And then I started to think about it and I realized, uh, sorry, not I realized, but I started to talk to people about it. And I realized that basically every second person was struggling with sleep and nobody knew what to do about it. But for me, it was very simple to fix because I just put together my degrees and I created step-by-step -step guides. And this was really powerful for uh, my initial clients. And then there was so much demand for it. I decided to specialize. And a few years later, or you know, five, five or so years later with a book behind me and um, you know, partnerships with global brands like Samsung and Ikea and Silly. And now, now we're at Drop Bio, Drop Bio Health sleep seminar <laughs> yeah and here we are and it is really quite an extraordinary story and that sort of that personal metamorphosis that you went through to be able to find something that obviously your beautiful community really resonates with and, and really shares in your journey as well um, coupled with all you know all that study all those insights um, it's really really powerful and you certainly um, kind of cracked it I guess in terms of um, really understanding sleep and, and helping people and we have had, um, as I mentioned, a, another sleep seminar with Olivia um, where we went through and spoke about sleep chronotypes. And we'll, we'll touch on those tonight as well. But um, there is that event also on our website, which is super helpful as well. And that um, closely references uh, Olivia's book, which is around finding out and understanding your sleep chronotype. So check that out too. But um, amazing story. And we're so grateful to, to be part of your story now um, at Drop and to continue to work with you, Olivia. So what I will do without further ado is step away and, um, and let you take over the screen if you want to bring up your slides and um, we can talk through sleep saboteurs. I will then um, come back in um, after Olivia talks um, and we'll have a bit of a Q&A with the audience as well. So thank you so much, Olivia, and I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you so much, Abby. And thank you so much, Drop Bio guests. It is a absolute pleasure to be to be. <laughs> sorry, my slides are having having a bit of fun themselves. I have not encouraged them to do that, but let's just jump over to it because I went through my introduction and now you know a bit about me. But really, I want you to know this this seminar is about what you will learn and how you will benefit because I want you to leave here knowing exactly how to get better sleep starting tonight and that is exactly what you will find out in this seminar so if you have a notepad I highly encourage you get it out with your pen and make sure the pen is working and be prepared to take some notes that you can implement tonight because um, knowledge is power, but applied knowledge is ultimate power. So as the slides illustrate, the top you will learn, top three reasons you will fall asleep, how to overcome those challenges and how to adapt these lessons into your lifestyle. So let's get into the first one. But before I do that, I just want to get a show of hands on the chat box or you can give me a why. Um, who here has difficulty is falling asleep? I would be very interested. It's one of, it is one of the top challenges that my clients find. Yes, Lauren. And Ali, thank you for Olivia as well. T Ali takes forever sometimes. Yeah, that's what a lot of my clients find. And it's um, really challenging because they're often just laying in bed and trying to get to sleep and nothing seems to work. And just this can happen. This can go on for hours sometimes. So if that's you, I'm very happy to be here with you and sharing this, this, uh, this session. So now that we have 
share. Oh, we're having some, we're having some more, 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 more chat. This is fantastic. Bev, I used to, but then not getting back to sleep. Yes, that's a very common challenge. Common as as Kaz has reinforced, not falling asleep, but staying asleep. So for those who are struggling to stay asleep, I want you to know that the lifestyle factors that I'm going to discuss now are both relevant to difficulties falling and staying asleep. So this is going to be great for both of those individuals or the same if you are struggling with both elements. So Robin, you're waking a lot. I'm glad you're here because hopefully after the seminar, you will not be waking so much. Let us dive in. And we are going to sleep school lesson one, why you can't fall and stay asleep. This is blue light. Blue light, blue light, blue light, blue light. Blue light is stemming from your phones, devices, laptops, TVs, even your regular ceiling lights, they emit blue light. And what this does is it compromises your production of a sleepiness hormone called melatonin. As you can read on the screen, very simply, the more melatonin we have, the, we, the sleepier we feel and the easier it is for us to fall asleep. The less melatonin we have, the harder it is for us to fall and stay asleep. And just to reference academia, because I do love to bring that in, um, a 2006 study found that melatonin levels decline by 46% with just one hour of blue light in the evening. Now, 46% is a huge drop considering that we need 100% in order to fall and stay asleep easy. And I want to just have just a simple yes, no, who gets one hour of blue light in the evening? Now, this can be from TVs or phones or computers or ceiling lights. Now, I think I think with that such a wide range of uh, influences that I would doubt that no one would not be having one hour of blue light. And with regards to what time in the evening, that would be after dark. So let's say 8 p.m. Yes. So I know, and this is, this is going to feed very nicely into our next sleep saboteur, which is devices. Now I like to link them two together because you can't have, well, you can have blue light without devices in the form of ceiling lights, but the strongest form of blue light because it is so close to our faces is often from our phones. Um, Alex, I'm reading that at 8 p.m. you get off technology, which is great. Um, but I am aware that this, as you said, that's most of the time, not all of the time. So this may still be an issue for your sleep, those times you don't. Um, and linking back to, you know, our reasons why we can't fall asleep, this is a huge one. And we all know it. We know that we're not meant to be on our devices before bed, but we still do it. And we still experience sleep problems and we still want to understand why that's why <laughs> I wish that I could sugarcoat it and say that it's something else, but I would not be a sleep expert, a, a credible sleep expert. If I said otherwise, the thing is that our bodies are not designed to be exposed to light and blue light in the evening dating back to prehistoric times when we had blue light it signaled to our circadian rhythm our body clock be alert light equals be alert it still does to this day just because we have evolved and we have artificial technology does not mean that our circadian rhythm has adapted and this is the key reason why one of at least why we are experiencing such significant problems with our sleep and as you can see, this is reflected in academics as well. Using a phone in the last hour before bed 
increases your likelihood of taking over an hour to fall asleep by 48%. And using a computer in this time frame makes you 52% more likely to take over an hour to fall asleep too. And we are now going to move on to our third sleep saboteur, which is stress. Now, stress is such a big one. And I know personally when I'm stressed, I actually do struggle to sleep sometimes. Um, and so I know that for most people, this is the case. And essentially what happens is our bodies move into a hyper alert, hyper vigilant state called fight or flight. This is very normal. And again, it bases back to prehistoric days when, when we were in fight or flight or stressed, usually it was from a predator that was potentially going to kill us. Now we didn't want to be killed. So our nervous system adapted to be extra energized and extra alert when we are stressed. This was really effective when our stresses were like bears and you know potentially potential to kill us the thing is that the stresses that we experience now in modern day society are more chronic ongoing stresses it might be um you know difficulties at work or problems in your finances or a problem with your relationship and these stresses do not necessarily disappear overnight or, you know, within a short period of time like a bear would. So what happens is we remain in this hyper alert state day and night. And this is, again, a key reason why we struggle to fall and stay asleep when we are stressed. Can I just get a show of whys about who, stress, who sleeps worse when they're stressed? Yes, Alex. Yes, Lauren. Yes, Carol. Yes, Ali. Yes, Caroline. Thank you so much for your participation, guys. It's really beautiful to have feedback. Kaz, yeah. I, I, I like having an interactive seminar. I feel like I'm, um, I'm giving a lecture and it's very boring. <laughs> so I'm glad that you, you're, uh, that you're with me, guys. All right, so given that these are common challenges to all of us, I feel like it's really valuable to share the ways to overcome these things, these challenges. Now, from the first one, reducing blue light. Um, I have a range of ways that we can do this. All I want you to do is just take one of those ways and write it down that is best suited to you and your lifestyle. You might be able to schedule a tech-free activity for the evening, or you might be a reader and think, oh, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to choose a book rather than an e-reader tonight. Or you might have blue light glasses, which I highly, highly recommend. And you can get them from my sleep shop on my website. Or you might reduce household lighting in the evening. Or you might do all of these things, but rather than get overwhelmed and think you have to do all of these things, just pick one of those things and then write it down now because I'm going to ask you later which one you're going to implement and which one you wrote down. So give you guys one moment. All great tips, all helpful all going to reduce blue light and therefore improve your sleep quality. So that is the first strategy that we are discussing. The second one is to avoid devices. Now, this is really easy when you don't have devices in your room. One of my principles of a sleep sanctuary that it's tech free. This means no TV, this means no phone. If you need a phone, to use your alarm, then please get a traditional alarm clock. Very clever thing to, uh, to do. <laughs> Outside of that, you can also have a alarm to remind you to, to disconnect from tech. Now I include this in my signature bedtime routine. I call it the good night phone alarm. 
Um, outside of that, you can list the activities that aren't on devices that you wish you had time for. It might be going for a walk. It might be meditating. It might be reading. It might be journaling. All of those things can be done in tech-free time. And so again, I highly recommend and I request even that you write one of these strategies down and when at the end we are sharing what we're going to do to overcome our sleep saboteurs I want you to be able to share exactly the one that you are going to implement so please write this one down as well And lastly, we are going to move to how to overcome stress. Now, stress is a big one, but there are ways that we can mediate it, which don't necessarily involve resolving the stressor itself. You know, it might be an ongoing stressor. For example, my granddad is in hospital right now. That's a, that's a stressor. That's stressing. That's, that's not a comfortable feeling. But I can still do any of these elements any of these stress reduction re reducing elements which allow me to feel less stressed even though that stress is still existing so lessening stress some recommendations avoid checking the phone the first thing wait that wait avoid checking your phone first thing upon waking Two, start the day with a walk. It will boost your levels of serotonin. That's an anti-stress hormone. Yoga is another great recommendation. Great anti-stress as well. Meditate daily. Read a printed book. And schedule stress decompress time. I love my stress decompress time. I allocate it every morning when I take my dog for a walk and it is my time, I do not answer calls. I do not answer emails. I do not answer anything or anyone. I need my time. It's my stress decompress. So I highly recommend, again, write which one you are going to do as I'd love to know which is the most appealing to you out of those. And... Now that we have moved on from those tips and tricks, how are you going to adapt these into your lifestyle? Now, Abby and I are going to have a bit of a conversation about this. So I'm going to stop sharing my video, sorry, stop sharing my screen so we can have a little chat about how to implement these strategies into your lifestyle so you see and feel and experience the best sleep of your life. Abby? Sounds so good. <laughs> Thank you, Olivia. Thank you so much, as always. Guys, um, if you'd like to share um, what you're going to do, anything that, you'd, um, that you've written down and you're, you'd like to share with the group, please feel free to use the chat if you're comfortable. As I mentioned, we do have a Q&A component to tonight's event. So if you've got questions, I can see a few of them have already come through into that Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. So if you put them in the chat, I might miss them there. So just pop them in that um, Q&A box and they can be anonymous also. So Olivia, I mean, we've had lots of chats um, uh, around, around this topic as well um, and all the juicy advice within. Um, I wanted to dive a little bit into tech um, because it's such a big part of our lives now. Um, I saw, by the way, Alex, Gold Star is wearing um, blue light glasses now in this event. So well done, Alex. So fantastic. So great. I love <laughs> and that. And I just I noted, yeah, I just noted my blue light glasses for me and, and my partner as well. So um, that's a good reminder. But yeah, talking about tech, um, you know, we've, we're all in a lot of um, sort of patterns and habits now. We've had tech in our lives for a long time. How can we break habits such as being on our phones late at night or using TV to switch off? Because a lot of people say, well, that, that sort of really relaxes me, but to that stress argument, um, you know, and I just can't sort of stop that bedtime scroll. I mean, I've even done it myself. I've gone to set an alarm for the morning and I uh, did take your note on the digital alarm clock. And then suddenly I'm on Instagram and it's, 10 minutes later and I've just been mindlessly scrolling so yeah how can we sort of start to break some of these habits what do you suggest 
So I think I think the first thing we need to pay attention to is our is our self talk. You know, it's we choose to do these things each night, and we subconsciously we we choose them by default. We don't realize that we're choosing them by default, but we have a choice every night whether to be on our phones or or watch TV or not. It is not prescribed. We didn't wake up doing that. We didn't. We didn't do that from the time that we were born, right? And so I understand a lot of people say, oh, you know, it's just what I do. No, it's just what you do now. It's what you have been doing now. It's not part of your genetic makeup. And so recognizing that is the first distinction because if we feel like something is part of our identity, like I'm a TV watcher Mm -hmm. before bed, I'm a TV watcher. It, that's that's part of our identity that's hard to shift but if it's a behavior I watch tv before bed it's it means the same but that slight language shift allows us to disconnect from that behavior I because then if, if it's I watch tv before bed then it I can also I cannot watch tv before bed understand yeah so I think that's yeah I think that's the first big one you really want to shift any bad habit or any habit you're trying to change from being part of your identity to something that you are choosing and being aware that you are choosing to be on your phone you are choosing to watch tv these and these are your choices and then with that you can recognize if you want to actually repeat that choice And if you do not, because it is causing you problems, as in it is causing you to wake up through the night or difficulties falling asleep, then you can, again, choose something else. And that's why I had the few suggestions there. But rather than, so this is like, you know, habit formation, right? Rather than just say, okay, cool. Now I'm going, now I'm a reader before bed. That's what I do. In order to really make that shift over, what you want to do is use it, use the SMART goal principles like you would any other goal. Um, you know, some people are trying to get fit for summer and, you know, like have a, have a 30 day detox, for example, you know, clean eating. Address this sleep goal the same way. So measure it, track it, have an accountability partner. Measure it every night when you are implementing it. Have I, have I read my book? Have I not used devices? Have I blocked out blue light? Tick, tick, tick. Create measurements for these metrics. And when yeah, you, and it's really, really important to be held accountable. We all need to be held accountable. And if somebody's not standing over you like a sleep coach like myself, then use what accountability capacities you have and that might just be a goal tracking sheet it might be a star chart on your wall that you see in the bathroom or next to your bed you know there needs to be a way that you are reminded each and every night to take action and a little tracking mechanism like that is helpful as is having triggers So if you used to, after dinner, the the pattern is pack up dinner, wash, wash dinner plates, sit in front of TV until I fall asleep. That's a pattern. So what you want to do is recognize that after the, after you have washed, washed your dinner plates, there is an opportunity for a new habit. So rather than just say, oh, I'm just going to cut off, you know, half an hour early, just slice that habit off completely and form a new routine in replacement of that. Yeah, I love that. That's wonderful. We've just started doing, um, as soon as dinner's done, I mean, daylight savings helps, but we just take our kids, take our dog and we do a walk around the block, just around the neighbourhood. Just such a great habit to be out and about, bit of fresh air connection 
um, we just kind of come back into the house feeling, uh, I guess, a lot less stressed as well and um, a little bit more grounded. Um, but I love that. And I guess, um, you know, not all tech is bad either, is it, <laughs> obviously? Um, I mean, you've suggested some, some great ways of sort of tracking and measuring um, sleep um, and seeing that impact over time, which I imagine would be very motivating. What sort of other, um, you know, tech can we look at, you know, in terms of sleep and helping us to understand the impact that that's having on us or to um, measure and improve our sleep? I think one, one of the best things I can recommend is actually from, from you guys, which is the, the uh, Rob Bio Health blood test. What this well shows... Yes, yes. So, so one of the biomarkers that indicates your sleep score is cortisol. Cortisol is an awakening hormone. When you are stressed or when you're experiencing too much blue light, you will have high levels of cortisol. And as a result, you won't be able to sleep well because high levels of cortisol inhibit the full production of melatonin, that sleepiness hormone. So a great technology can be our friend for sure. And, you know, it's really helpful. Say, for example, you're starting a new sleep routine, then tracking your biomarkers like cortisol at the beginning and then 30 days later or 90 days later. So you can actually assess that change and quantify how is your body reacting to these changes and is it having the physiological effect that you desire? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, for anyone that is interested in, in wellbeing, we um, have the next release coming up shortly. So there is a wait list and um, we'll pop that link in the chat box as well. But yeah, thank you, Olivia. Um, so we spoke about stress um, and, and really love looking at these activities around stress reduction. We can't get rid of stress, but there's definitely things that we can do to help reduce that. Um, just in terms of that, when we are feeling really busy and overwhelmed, um, how can we factor in some of these activities? So they are, they are such great activities. What's a way if we're super overwhelmed that we could just start to try to bring these in? Because we know ultimately they're going to benefit us, but when we're in that super stressed out state, sometimes it can feel like we've had feedback you know, from people around habit changing. Oh, it feels like just another thing that I have to do. Mm. How can we kind of flip that and actually just get started? Mm. I think, I think having, having an accountability partner who's checking in on you, that, that's really important. Um, essentially, you know, when we're in that really like it's all too much effort, this is usually not true. It's usually just we, you know, it's, it's really not that hard, you know, to, for example, step away from your laptop and go for a five minute walk that's not a, that's not a that's not a hard thing to do sometimes though we get really overwhelmed so I think it's really important when we are going through a stressful period to have regular check-ins with um you know with others to just make sure that we're mindful of how we're feeling and if we do feel like we are overwhelmed then they can sort of pull us up as well um you know speaking of uh, great great tech devices there uh, there's a great app called looper uh it's called be a looper and what it does is it asks the individual to have five people in their loop and five people that they check in with every day and so every day you can set an alarm and it's like okay 10 o'clock how are you feeling and then it it so it, it keeps you accountable it, it doesn't allow you to get caught up in that story because it's when we get caught up in that story that's when catastrophe you know outlays because we are just caught in this spiral but really what we need to be is keeping engaged with others and so having you know regular check-ins with others is I think the antidote to make sure that we don't become too overwhelmed by um you know by stress yeah I love the idea of that so that's the looper app yeah, it's called Be a Looper. Be a Looper. Yeah. Yeah, because I think, uh, you know, with accountability partners, um, uh, most people are probably familiar with, with the concept, you know, in, in, in other areas. I know for exercise, it's, it's a big one. 
having that accountability partner to make sure you show up together for that walk at 7 a.m. Or, or the likes. How do you sort of, I mean, the Loop app sounds, sounds awesome as well. How do you sort of engage, if you haven't done that before, how do you engage someone to be an accountability partner um, you know, without feeling that you're maybe asking something of them. Some people might find it really hard to, to ask someone for a favor. How do you kind of broach that conversation or how do you, yeah, kind of negotiate that? I think it's a really interesting concept, but for someone to, you know, for them to understand what you're trying to achieve, how do you articulate that with them and mm. what sort of framework can you put in place to check in with each other? I, I really just like a scoring system out of 10. Just keep it really basic. You don't even have to, you don't even have to use words. You just say, out of 10, how stressed am I feeling today? And have have that, you know, check in with yourselves. You know, can one of my another one of my friends has a rule because I've done that. I've done that with him before. And it can be any time between 12 you check in. And if you're cons- if you're consistently low, or if you're particularly low, then the other person can, you know, ask, well, you know, like, have you what's up or have you done this or this or this in terms of being a burden it's only a burden if the person doesn't actually care about you but if you're choosing somebody that genuinely cares about you just like as if you want them to tell you when they're stressed they want you to tell them when you're stressed it's not a burden they care about you yeah, and it goes two ways, right? It's it's dual Definitely. accountability. You're checking in with each other. I think it's a really um, great concept, and I think a lot of people are still fairly isolated, working from home, perhaps not getting out about as much as well. So, um, I love that that concept as well. Um, conscious of time, um, Olivia, I would love to open up um, and get some questions from um, our audience tonight. Um, sure. Got some awesome tips um, and um, insights being shared in the chat as well. So thank you so much for that, guys. Um, I think our Olivia at Dropbio has also just put in the the Be A Looper um, app um, link or reference. Um, But yeah, if you've got a question, um, this is your chance to have a sleep expert answer it for you. I'm gonna jump straight in because we've already got five in there and ask, um, how can stress during the day affect how well or not well we sleep later that night? Hugely, hugely. So the, you know, what what happens when the body is stressed? Our bodies produce cortisol. That makes us feel alert and energized. That's not a, that doesn't end after, you know, like 10 minutes. That stays in our body for hours and hours and hours. This is why, you know, this, this is why I don't recommend you, um, you know, you start the day with your phone because all of a sudden your whole morning which is meant to be you know relaxing and you know your time to process and plan the day all of a sudden you're flung into this stress state so you know in terms of how much it ruin it impacts your sleep it would depend on the stressor itself and depend on you know your your sleep condition itself sure um, thank you. Uh, Lauren asked a question that I also had actually. So thank you, Lauren. She was asking specifically in terms of blue light. What about a Kindle with no backlight? It's still found to be problematic. It's not as bad as, as a Kindle with with backlight, but it's mm-hmm. still problematic. Okay. There's the answer, Lauren. So maybe Kindle by day and paperback by night exactly. Paper <laughs> back. might be the answer I do love my kindle because yeah for, for lots of reasons but um yeah that that makes sense so um thank you Lauren for that question uh someone was asking us around a correlation between diet and sleep and if we can talk through that a little bit sure um overall high sugar diets very bad for sleep high fat diets very bad for sleep um, key nutrients that you need, high levels of protein, high levels of omega-3, very, very important. It helps regulate uh, melatonin production. Um, other key sleep nutrients, vitamin D, this acts as a cofactor in uh, melatonin production as well. Magnesium, it's the main muscle relaxant of the mineral world. 
um, and also calcium is vital for healthy sleep. Um, outside of that, surprisingly, vitamin C is actually also correlates with um, healthy sleep and one of the major uh, factors that needs to be, yeah, you need to have sufficient vitamin C in order to sleep properly. But most people do because vitamin C is in so many fruits and vegetables. So um, yes, so huge correlations. Overall, like a great diet for sleep something along the lines of eggs in the morning, um, you know, with some vegetables, maybe some sourdough bread or, um, you know, something along those lines. Um, and then for lunch, you may want to have a, maybe a poke bowl with some brown rice and tofu or chicken. Uh, and some vegetables, especially green vegetables, because they're really rich in a lot of the key sleep micronutrients we need. Um, then for a snack, something really high in omega-3s like uh, some avocado or a handful of nuts, um, that's going to be really helpful as well, as would a banana, because that's really high in potassium, which is another sleep micronutrient. And then in the evening, having a like a roast fish, uh, fish fillet with um, some lightly steamed greens or lightly steamed vegetables. You want to have something cooked in the evening because it's easier on digestion, which is important for quality sleep because it is so close to bedtime. Um, or if you're vegetarian, having um, tempeh is a great option, as are nuts and seeds and you can often sprinkle these over a for example like a curry like a coconut curry with you know rich in uh, vegetables and and quinoa and sprinkled with some you know hemp seeds that would also be a really great option for vegetarians and vegans or anyone Yum. because that's just delicious yeah i'm hungry i'm um, hungry after that answer <laughs> that sounds delicious yes thank you and just on that, well, thank you. Or just on that, um, what we eat and and when we eat it, is, how important is that? I mean, obviously, you're not going to have a bunch of sugar at bedtime. You know, anyone with kids will probably relate to that mistake. But how important it is is it to eat certain things at certain times of the day, or does it not really matter? So it's not so much the like you can have your sleep micronutrients throughout the day. It's not. It's not like you need to have, um, you know, high protein just before bed in order to make melatonin. Um, the only exception to the rule with that one is magnesium. If you have a high level of magnesium in the evening, but this usually is best in a supplement form, this can be really helpful for, for relaxation. Um, but outside of timing, you know, yeah, in, sorry, in terms of timing, what I do recommend is having a consistent time because this acts as a body clock regulator. So this helps regulate our circadian rhythm, which helps keep our melatonin levels and our awakening hormones like serotonin level, those, those levels, it helps them keep them regular. Right. So our body really does like that routine. Yes, definitely. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, someone has put through a, well, a question and a comment um, that I'm sure some, some of us can relate to. They said they don't have an issue falling asleep. The issue is that their partner snores. And so then they wake up, then they go to the bathroom, and then they're awake. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really sure what the question is there, but I really relate to when I put that one through. Um, but what, what okay. can we do when, yeah, when we're woken up by someone else and then we kind of can't get back to sleep? Okay, so there's a few things here. Um, first, the partner snoring. There is a great device called mute snoring. I actually had a personal experience with it. I used it myself for my part, for my not my partner, but my uh, roommate. I was on a retreat. She sounded like a truck the first time. <laughs> the second night, because I gave her this, and I was like, oh my god, I am not going to be able to sleep all week. I gave her this device. I kid you not, she sounded as faint as a whistle. I could not believe my eyes, but 
Um, wow. to, to the yeah, to the point that I'm actually a partner of them of theirs now because it it blew me away so much. And um, so what it is, it's a nasal dilator. You literally, it's a gently put in the nose. It opens up the nostrils. It allows you to snore less. Seventy five percent of users snore less. Wow. It's it's huge. It's so it's so so powerful. Um, it's in my sleep shop. So and I've also got a discount code. So I highly recommend. It all people who are suffering snoring partners, check that out. But the second answer to that quest, second part of that question was around, you know, you get up and then you go to the bathroom and then you can't sleep. So yeah. what happens when you go to the bathroom is you turn on the lights. Of course, because you don't go to the bathroom in the dark, but in turning on the lights, remember that is emitting blue light. So it's not just that your partner's snoring, that's you awake. You're also awake because you are experiencing blue light in the middle of the night. So those remedies that I recommended, and particularly for evening, for, for nighttime wakings, popping a pair of blue light blocking glasses on, really helpful, really effective. Yeah, I th thank you. That's, that is great. I think um, we've had a few questions and sort of comments around waking up to go to the bathroom in the night. Um, and I guess that leads into the next question, um, which was around, uh, again, sort of question or comment. It's such a fine line to drink enough water every day, but then also not need to get up and go to the toilet at night. So any tips around that scenario? What you'll, what you'll actually find is um, when the body is exposed to less stresses, like, like all of the recommendations that I've shared with you today, both less device usage, especially in the evening, less blue light and stress remedying uh, activities, all of these elements will actually lessen how sensitive your bladder is. The bladder, when, it's, when, it, when, you, are, when you are under high levels of stress, the bladder is extremely sensitive and you need to pee every 10 seconds. Might not be that bad for everyone because you might not be under extreme stress, but if you are waking frequently through the night, it would occur less if your body was exposed to less stresses such as blue light. Um, second to that, I would definitely encourage the most of your fluids to be in to be taken in the start of the day. Yeah. That's really interesting about the bladder. Um, that wasn't something I was aware of, but yeah, anecdotally, it actually yeah, it makes sense when I kind of think back. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, super interesting. Uh, it's not um, so much a question, but I do want to just read out this comment from Simona in chat, um, who said uh, that um, they followed the previous webinar and um, are already changing habits in order to sleep better. Oh, so that's okay. awesome to hear. Um, Simona used to fall asleep with TV in the background because there's lessons, um, there's stress, but now um, Simona doesn't turn on the TV in their bedroom, um, which is not easy, but it is working. So that is so great to hear. Um, and that they turn the light from the smartphone to, from, uh, to Amber from dusk till dawn using earplugs um, because they always wake up in the night in case of noise. So Overall, Simona thinks their sleeping is better now, um, but still has to continue because stress levels are still high. But that's amazing, all those changes you've been able to implement in yeah. Yeah, a few weeks, right? Thank you, Simona. That's well done. It's not hard. It's not easy to make changes. So I am thrilled that you are and keep it up and you'll keep seeing great results. Yeah, really good to hear that um, someone's already put this into practice <laughs> for us to get a little bit more motivation towards making some of these changes. Okay, a couple right. more questions and then we'll we'll have to wrap up because this um, hour has really flown by, but um, thank you everyone who's been putting Crazy. this forward. Yeah, um, Amaya has asked, what tips do you have for someone who's afraid of the dark, especially in new places? So like staying in a hotel the first night, for example. Um, thank you for that. I really relate to that. I feel a bit anxious in new places too. Um, I think it's just about making the space as familiar as you can. So, you know, if, um, you know, setting your bed, setting the room up like you would your bedroom, I think that can be really comforting. Um, outside of that, you know, 
making sure that you keep on doing the same practices you would at home that make you feel relaxed. You know, it might be having a bath or having a shower or practicing deep breathing before bed or meditating. Um, keep that up in the new hotel room. That's going to be really helpful. Yeah, awesome. Because we do often, we're in a new place and, and those routines do tend to go out the window with it, doesn't it? don't they exactly yeah okay um thank you alex has asked um or, or said that they would be curious for some suggestions in how to do that tracking for sleep as in perhaps ways to rate or describe how um their sleep was for the night so yeah, yeah. when you sort of you spoke about pencil and paper star charts but how do we kind of break that down and kind of evaluate our sleep a great question alex thank you um, so I've got a I've got a goal tracking sheet on my website. Um, I can if you go to my website, you'll you'll find it. It's on it's in the blog section. Um, I don't want to look for it now because I feel like I'll become too distracted. <laughs> we can find that and pop pop that in the yeah. chat. No worries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, so that's a, that's a, that's in a general way to just it's literally just like a tick sheet. It's like here are the bedtime routine activities that I'm going to be doing that help going to help me sleep better. And as I'm moving through the evening, I'm going to tick them off. With regards to evaluating your sleep quality, um, there is a, another um, tech, uh, tech platform I recommend that has a sleep diary in it. It's called Sleep Score. It's an app. And what you can do is each, each morning, it asks you to rate your sleep. Um, it asks you how long it took you to fall asleep, how many times you wake through the night, how, how deeply you slept, all of the metrics that you're probably going to want to track. So I would recommend, um, you know, they have a 30 day free trial, at least last time that I spoke to, spoke to the guys, they did. So I'd recommend jumping on that app and having that app track your qualitative data as well. Great, awesome. And um, Olivia, our Olivia um, at Dropbio has just popped a link um, into the chat box with a um, link to Olivia Arizolo's um, sleep products. And um, we'll also pop one in there for um, that uh, sheet as well. Um, but some great options there. We've got one more question, it's just squeezed in. Um, uh, okay, someone just commenting and saying thank you for the suggestions about the snoring. Um, okay, Kaz, I just saw another question pop in. You've got the last question for, for this evening, so thank you. Um, Kaz says, when I go to bed, I meditate and do Reiki on my phone. That is amazing. I didn't know you could do that. How do I do this if I shouldn't have my phone in my bedroom? So the Reiki, I'm really not sure about. I, I don't understand the, the technology there, but <laughs> meditation, I know you can do, um, you can have, there are products there are that have guided meditations, for example, there's one called Morphe. Um, and it's just like, it looks like a white noise machine or like a speaker, but it has, you know, options for guided meditations and things like that. For the, the meditation part of that question, that would be my recommendation. The Reiki, I do not have an answer for you right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, I'm intrigued as well. I have to look into that because, um, yeah, I didn't know that there was a, a Reiki app or that you could use your phone, but that's super interesting. Yeah. But, yeah, I think generally if we're looking at these sort of things that these apps and, um, uh, yeah, apps that help support sleep, um, we're, we're trying not to have them in the bedroom still, correct? Yes, yes limited definitely. time on those, Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much, Olivia. I feel like that was a lot of quick fire questions, but you know, they, they never stop coming on the topic of sleep and there's already always so many um, interesting and diverse questions. So I wanna say a really big thank you to you um, for your thank time you. and wisdom as always. And I would like to extend a really big thank you to everyone in the audience tonight because I've seen so many wonderful um, uh, tips and, um, and sharing um, around what's working for people um, and, and what they're doing, which um, is what our community is all about. So thank you so much, everybody. Um, we will be posting the replay from tonight's event on Drop Bio Health over the next few days. So keep an eye out for that. Um, 
if you're keen to um, hear more about our wellbeing product and that next release, which helps you really look at what your blood is saying about your sleep and be able to see the changes that you're making across all your health um, over a period of time, the link to um, our website is in the chat again, and you can join that wait list there. And um, we've also popped in the chat box um, links to our Instagram and Olivia's Instagram. Um, I know some of you already have come across from her wonderful community. Um, please go ahead and follow her. She's got so much great content around sleep and all things health um, and just, yeah, super um, lovely community to be part of. Um, along with our own Facebook group, which is Drop Bio Health, and we have a, a private group that you can join and continue the conversation there. I think that is pretty much everything. Um, yeah, follow along, keep an eye on our socials, um, and keep an eye out for our next newsletter, which will have more interesting content. Um, that's pretty much it from me. I, yeah, thank you again, everybody. Um, if you uh, have any questions or comments on the event, please get in touch. Um, but otherwise. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you to our lovely community. And we really look forward to having you back again soon, Olivia, to talk um, about another interesting aspect of sleep. Thank you so much for having me. And likewise, it's always such a pleasure to be here. I love our time and I very much appreciate you. So thank you so much. Likewise. Well, I hope everyone has a lovely rest this evening and, um, and sleeps well. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Have a great night.